In this video, we're going to look at the audio capture component. This enables us to capture the player's microphone input. We can then use the amplitude envelope of this signal to set variables or to instigate events within the game. In the first cave of the demonstration project, that's bookmark key 6, there is a shy baby griffin. We looked at the baby griffin in an earlier video where we used the pawn sensing and pawn noise emitter components to get the creature to respond to a pre-made whistle sound. If we select that blueprint, we can see that that was in sound sensing mode. We're now going to switch to audio capture mode so that we can use the actual microphone input to entice the griffin to come closer. Let's open up that blueprint to have a look how it's working. Enabling external audio to input to Unreal Engine is quite straightforward. You just need to add an audio capture component to your blueprint. This will pick up whatever is assigned in your computer settings as the microphone input. On Windows, right-clicking the speaker icon will allow you to choose your input device. I've got a slightly more complex routing system using the Voice Meter Potato software so that I can route anything I want to this input, but for now I've just routed my headset mic to it. Here we have an on audio envelope value event from the audio capture component. If we set that to auto activate, then we can see the amplitude envelopes coming from the microphone. So we'll add a print string and just route those envelope values to that print string. Test, test, testing. So you can see those values change as it receives input from my microphone. In the sound section of the audio capture component, you can set the envelope follower attack and release times to smooth out these values a little. So if we set the release time to 1000 here, you should see those values go down a bit more slowly. Test. Test. For now, I'm going to turn off auto activate, since I don't want the component to be active all the time. To make things a bit more interesting, we're going to set it up as a kind of intercom or radio type system where you need to press a key in order to open the voice channel. So when the player overlaps with this collision box, we start the system. We're using an enum variable to route the events depending on whether we're using the audio capture mode or the sound sensing mode. You might remember that an enum is simply an enumeration asset, a numbered list. In this instance, there's only two entries, one for our audio capture and one for our sound sensing. By making that enum variable public in our blueprint, we can get a nice drop-down menu in our details panel. And the switch on enum node allows us to route the events depending on that choice. So once this gate has been opened by the player overlapping that collision box, the player can press E, and if the entice method is set to audio capture using the enum again, this is when we actually activate that audio capture component. And then when we release the key, we deactivate it. You'll also notice here that we're activating and deactivating something else as well. And that's the audio component that is held in this variable, source bus in player. To make it feel more like you are the actual player in the game world, what we're doing is routing the microphone input into the game world itself. If we select the audio capture component, and go down to the effects section, you can see that this is set to output to bus only. This means all of this microphone input sound will be going to the bus that we designate. This is the source bus player character, and we're using a manual send, send level one. Now you won't have heard this yet since that source bus has not been active. If we look in the first person character, we can find that source bus within this audio component. To add a source bus to a blueprint, you just add an audio component, and instead of assigning a sound, you assign a source bus instead. They behave in exactly the same way. The source bus has reverb enabled, so that the voice is affected by the reverb in the cave, and also notice that we've added a non-spatialized radius of 300 units. Sometimes when a sound source is very close to the listener position, you can get some strange right-left ear panning when turning. So this just ensures that the sound feels like it comes from the player. Go back to the game 
And this time when I hold down the key E, you should be able to hear my voice within the game world. Testing. Testing. This is a test. For the next part, I need to replace this print string and connect my envelope value up here. We'll be coming back to what this does in a moment. What we wanted to do was to set up a system whereby the griffin is enticed over by gentle sounds, but if you're too loud, then you'll scare it away. So I'm just going to connect up this widget here, which is our visual amplitude meter. Looking again at the blueprint in the level, you'll see these two public variables. The min threshold is the threshold at which the griffin will hear you, and the max threshold is the threshold at which it will get scared. We've added this meter to the viewport so that you can experiment and set these threshold levels yourself. So now you can see that widget on the screen, and if I hold down the key E, you can, you can see, see that my, my voice, voice level, level is affecting the, the meter. When we deal with amplitude, we often refer to decibels. Now decibels are not actually a fixed unit of measurement, rather they are a unit of measurement that's used to express the ratio between one value and another. And the logarithmic scale used makes it easier to deal with large ranges of numbers. If our meters use the linear measurement of the envelope's amplitude, then most of the activity would be over a really narrow range down at the bottom of the scale. So we've used a bit of maths to convert the envelope value of the audio capture component to decibels, using the reference of the linear amplitude value of 1 as being 0 dB and 0 as being minus 144 dB. In order to make it a bit more meaningful, we've set the lower point of the meter to be minus 60. So here you can see the upper and lower thresholds represented on that widget. When I hold down E, if I make, if I make a, sound a sound above, above that, that lower, lower threshold, threshold then, then the, the griffin, griffin is attracted, is attracted by, that, by sound. that sound. And if I and make, if a, I make loud a loud sound, sound then, then the griffin, the griffin is, scared is scared away. away. The Griffin movement is controlled by the audio capture envelope value, now represented in decibels, and the thresholds. We know that the audio capture value is going to be within the range of minus 60 dB and 0 dB, so we use the map range clamp node to map that value to a range between 0 and 1, inverting the scale so that it's easier to work with, with minus 60 being 0 and 0 being 1. If the audio capture value is greater than our min threshold, but less than our max threshold, then we move the griffin towards the exit, in other words, towards the player. If it is not less than our max threshold, in other words, if the noise is too loud, then the griffin is set to flee. And there's a system within the baby griffin blueprint itself that blocks any further input until the baby griffin has returned to its nest, or in other words, it has stopped fleeing. So to summarise, if you want to use amplitude envelope analysis on an audio input to the engine, then you need to add an audio capture component to your blueprint. The event on audio envelope value will output the current envelope value of the input every frame. And you'll want to set the envelope follower attack and release times in the sound section here as appropriate to your needs. If you want to route this input audio into the game world itself, then you'll want to send it to a source bus within the effects section. This source bus can either be in the game world already, or it could be in a blueprint. In our case, this source bus exists within an audio component in the player character. This means that the audio input appears to come from the player themselves. When you're not using the audio capture component or the source bus, it's good practice to keep them deactivated. In the case of the audio capture component, this saves a bit of processing, and in the case of the source bus, switching this off frees up an extra audio voice. In this, in this video, video, we've looked, looked at how you, at how you can, can analyze the amplitude, amplitude envelope, envelope of a microphone, of a microphone input, input in order, in order to, instigate to instigate events, events in, the game, in the game, and how, and to, how route to route the audio, the audio into, into the, the game, game world, world itself. itself.